Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back. Uh, got the Pro Boat U19 on the block. This is Pro Boat's 30 inch ready to run hydroplane. This thing's a freaking beast, you guys. Uh, yesterday, when I was running the boat for uh, Rooster Tail Wednesday, um, I had my servo. My servo actually conked out on me. So today, we're going to be replacing the servo with this 20 kilogram DS servo. It's a good servo upgrade for the boat, for the boat. So uh, stick around, stick around. I'm going to kind of go over my setup with you guys and uh, we'll replace the servo, kind of jack my jaws a little bit. So stick around. Big B with that Clad RC. So uh, let's get to it. Let's get to it. I'm running a, a 150 offshore electrics ESC 6S capable, a 4082 SSS 1900 kV brushless motor with a 0.187 cable. All right. Um, I've got a blast pickup that I made for the boat. It actually works pretty freaking good. All right. Um, you know, I got oversized carbon fiber cooling lines to go to the motor and ESC. I just wanted to do something a little bit different with eight millimeter offshore electric cooling lines. I'm running a mad lizard curved turn fin, holds the boat down in a curve, and an upgrade 0.187. Flex cable, 316th shaft, offshore electrics, coupler, 5mm to 0.187 coupler, RC boat bits, water jacket, and uh, 6.5mm bullets, okay, with a DX5 rugged spectrum radio, holds up to 25 models, binds up right up to the stock receiver uh stock servo stock servo and um you know i've had this boat for about four months i guess maybe three or four months now and the stock servo has treated me well um i've actually heard of guys getting this boat running the boat a few times and the servo just conks out okay and um you know it's a common it's a common thing with rc boats with rc trucks truggies um anything that's man-made all right will fail I don't care if it's made in America, Hong Kong, Taiwan, you know, if it's man-made, it's going to possibly fail on you. I, Savix, HD, Power HD, they, anything you get, it's going to freaking fail at some point, all right? Uh, these servos aren't too bad. I mean, yes, they're plastic gear, you know, it's just a stock servo to get you going with your boat. It's a high performance boat, all right? It's made to be upgraded, all right? They make everything easy to, to remove on the boat, easy to install, so that you can upgrade and, and, and ironclad your boat out. Take my little Blackjack 24, for instance, all right? This little 24, I've had it for a year and a half, all right, a year and a half. I've been through dozens of different motors, ESCs, and uh, it's the stock servo in this boat. Now, the stock servo, it actually did go out on me. It went out because I actually sunk my boat. My, my hatch came off and it was completely submerged in water. I took the servo out, I broke these four screws loose, and took the two caps off. And what I did was I oiled the bearing in the motor, the bearing I could get to, and I sprayed the chipboard with corrosion X, okay? Uh, while I was, you know, I ran the Savix servo for a couple weeks. It was a used Savix, and uh, it, it conked out on me, and I, I pulled the stock servo back out. Um, I plugged it into the receiver. Boom, it freaking worked. I've had it in this boat ever since. A year and a half, okay? Now, the reason, the reason I have that servo in this boat for a year and a half now is because I set my endpoints, my dual rate, all right, my steering dual rate. If you guys notice, I have my, my dual rate, my steering rate turned down. I'm going to turn it all the way up for you guys so you can see where I have it at. So you see where the line is? I'm going to turn it all the way up. Okay, so I basically have it set half, half rate, okay, half rate. Uh, with an RC boat, Nine times out of ten, unless something, you know, unless you got like a big prop and it's and it's like uh, throwing the boat off, you, you might need a little bit more rate on your steering. But nine times out of ten, you can get away with a steering rate that's not as as, as aggressive as you think it might need. All all the rudder you need is about this much right here. That's it. You don't really need that much rudder, okay? Uh, and if you do use that much rudder. 
it's going to turn the boat too hard. A lot of times it'll cut too hard in a corner and she'll flip over. So, uh, you know, if you set your dual rates on your on your rudder, on your servo, you know, to where maybe maybe half, a little over half or something like that, uh, it's not going to bottom out the servo. You're not going to stress the servo out. It's almost like the servo is not even freaking working. Okay, it's just moving back and forth. It's not actually becoming stressed with, with, in a turn. You, you, you guys follow me? Nice. The, this boat would be better off with a with like a 20, 25, 30 kilogram servo. It's got the power to turn the boat. And uh, in a turn with this boat, it, it really, there's a lot of stress, a lot of strain being put on the, the steering servo. So, um, you know, I recommend when you get a boat like this, you know, upgrading the servo. I mean, these are good servos. You can use these servos in smaller boats. Like, uh, like I'm using my a stock servo from Pro Boat and this water bobber build. I just made the motor mount up. This build video is coming out here shortly. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you can use these plastic gear servos before they break. Take them out, upgrade it, and uh, use it. Use it in a smaller boat build. You know what I'm saying? Something that's not going to stress that plastic out. Uh, you know, I got a lot of boats that I run. I so I got a pretty decent little example. I already got some uh, 100C 5000s in the boat. Just going to kind of do some bench testing and stuff here. But uh, you notice I don't have my servo throw set full. You see that? It's not, it's not a full throw. All right, I got my... My steering set at 95 for the right turn, 71 for our left turn. It goes up to 150 on this remote right here. All right. Um, with this boat in its stock form, now you may need full right input from your servo. All right. 100% full right input with the stock turn fin. Now I have a curved turn fin and that aids the boat in a turn. So I was actually able to turn my throw down to 95 opposed to 150. I love to come around those corners just as hard as I can freaking go. So I got my batteries unplugged. Okay, uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull this servo RX wire from the receiver and pull our servo out. Uh, the nice thing I like about Pro Boat, man, they, they really do a good job of making things easy to get to, making things simple to work on. Uh, you know, look, I mean, the servo's out. Two screws, then you got four more. All right, so we're going to pull the servo arm here, and I think I'm going to take the servo arm off the linkage here because I'm actually going to upgrade the plastic servo arm to a metal servo arm here i got some uh i was i'm thinking that this right here may work it may work i might need to grind that little flanged area off of this servo arm and or drill a new hole all right i got the servo out here and uh we're putting the new servo back on i almost forgot to use loctite uh, this is an aluminum servo mount. Okay, so any type of aluminum, you know, when you're screwing into aluminum, you definitely need to use some sort of uh, Loctite. All right. Not much, just a little dab will do. All right, you guys, so uh, pretty easy, pretty simple. I got my servo mounted up on the servo mounts, the aluminum servo mount, fairly straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this this cap off the bottom of the servo real quick and I'm going to shoot some corrosion X in there. I treat all my servos with corrosion X regardless if they're waterproof or not. That light red o-ring that goes around this casing you don't want to pull that out and you really don't want to pull this guy right here off. Okay it just makes a pain in the butt to get back in. I got my my corrosion X. They got this Corrosion X and they got the HD Corrosion X. I just use the regular Corrosion X and I'm just going to give it a little zets. This little bit of this stuff goes a long way, you guys, I'm telling you. Don't want, really want to get it all over your wires because it will make your wires hard. So just use it, use it sparingly. Boom, done. High speed dynamite bearing oil. I'm just going to drop it right on that 
bushing on the motor boom done okay now i close that back up before it gets every all over the place i open this side up all right you guys see that bearing right there you can either use ball bearing oil for that bearing or or corrosion x it's great i've been using it in my bearings i read in a couple articles corrosion x is good for bearings it stops the corrosion process corrosion x you get it you get it all right a little bit there and i usually drop a little bit of this ball bearing oil under all right so our motors right here on this side i usually go right under that that big gear right there all right your your motors right there up under that big gear and uh, just drop a little bit of that oil on the gear and then you put everything back make sure that waterproof seal is on it all right so it's watertight close it back up okay this thing should be good to go it'll 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 it don't matter how many times you sink this servo you could dip it in water right now with the end caps off and uh, you shouldn't have to worry about water destroying the servo okay I do it to all my servos. I do it to every one of them. Even my little micro servos. Especially my little micro servos. If you were using dielectric grease, you could just pack it full of dielectric grease. Boom, boom, boom. Just pack it, jam, freaking pack full of electric grease. A lot of guys swear by the dielectric grease. I swear by the Corrosion X. Okay. Uh, I've been taking some alcohol, rubbing alcohol. As soon as I'm done, I wipe, I wipe the wires off with alcohol okay done all right that's her she should be ready for action all right now now we're going to install it just like we pulled it out boom servo Loctite into the servo tray. Okay, that's good to go. Uh, now let's work on the steering arm. All right. So for this for this servo arm, I was going to use the threads in the servo arm and back it with a nut. Okay, and it would actually work. But I think I'm actually going to drill my threads out. Okay building boats or rc cars an index drill bit is a is a great freaking tool to have i have two of them okay and i you know if i if i break a bit i can i have a i have my backup index drill bit set and these this thing comes in handy more times than i can even count and all i'm going to do on this servo arm is just drill out the threads that's all I want to do. I drilled the threads out so my easy connector is not threaded in. And I'm going to back it with a Loctited nut. I've already Loctited this nut. We don't want that to back out. I'm going to use the, the bottom hole. I was actually thinking about using a, you know, drilling a, another hole. But I, I think that should work. I should do the trick. I use the DX5 Rugged on this boat. An awesome upgrade for the boat. This holds 25 models. This DX5 Rugged. Zero out our steering. Okay, zeroed out. That's probably the most important part. Is uh, make sure your, your steering is zeroed out on your transmitter. She's definitely ironclad. All right, plug the battery in, and we got power to the servo. Okay, everything zeroed out. Uh, nine times out of ten, you want your your servo arm to be straight up and down. Okay, nine times out of ten, and make sure your rudder is in line, straight in line with the boat. You don't want your rudder to be cocked like this with the steering you know zeroed out on your remote and your arm in position uh, you want to make sure you got your your rudder in line in line with the boat okay um, 
so basically basically we're done all we got to do is put the the locking screw in make sure you put loctite on that i'll do it off camera it might be a little tough and uh that's it man that's it that's perfect okay and see that's too much throw really that's too much so i'm gonna actually go in here turn my travel down or you you can use your your uh your steering rate i'm gonna go about 75 percent throughout uh steering for both left and right that should be all we need. So I'm going to go ahead and get this arm and we'll finish this video up. Another really valuable tool is this flex driver from Harbor Freight. All right, this is the Harbor Freight flex driver. It's like the micro flex driver, not the full size flex driver. And I use a Craftsman uh, driver. Um, this is the one you get from Harbor Freight. It's just kind of cheap. I actually accidentally Loctited my freaking... Uh, I bit into this one, so I'm using this Craftsman <laughs> driver, but the flex driver comes in this a full set, you know, from, from Harbor Freight. You get the bits, the, the driver, the, the flex driver, and everything. Uh, it comes in handy when you're working on freaking boats, especially getting screws in and out of places under your transom, you know. But uh, look at that. It's easy, man. Look at this. Look. Oh, how you doing? Okay. Look at that. <laughs> huh? All right, now that we got everything locked in place. Okay, let's go over it all. All right, we got Loctite on our screws. We got Loctite on the base for the mount. Loctite on the servo horn screw, the adjuster screw for the arm. Loctite on the nut on the steering linkage. Okay, uh, now we just need to make sure we got everything in line. Looks like the rudder's in line with the boat. Looks good. Sounds good. Once we get to the pond, I'll turn the thro throw down some more. I really don't need that much throw. It's nice to have. But I don't need that much throw. It's just going to prematurely wear the servo out. But uh, that looks ironclad to me, you guys. That looks ironclad to me. Huh? <laughs> now we can go uh, throw some more rooster tails and prop some willies. Huh? <laughs> I appreciate you guys watching. I know it was kind of a long video. Hopefully there was a lot of information in here you guys can use for your boat, your boat build. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Big B with Ironclad RC.